Hey guys, I'm Tasting here. Welcome back to another video where today we're going to be, be beginning a brand new series where I'm going to teach you guys how to create your own awesome mods for Mind Test. So yeah, let's get right into it. Today we're going to be covering the basic directory structure of Mind Test mods and mod packs and explaining just basically getting our project set up so we've got a nice workspace and in general what files we're going to be worth working with. So let's get right into it here. Gonna start off by finding a place that we want to work. I normally work within the within a Git folder, and I create projects in there, and I normally manage it all with Git. But seeing as this is a completely different thing, we're not gonna be working with Git. I'm just gonna use a generic projects folder, and we just gotta start off by creating a new folder. In this case, I'm gonna call it tutorial, but this would need to be the, you could call it the code name of your mod. And I've already put a couple things in here. This is a basic mod template that I'll put the link down in the description below if you want to download it for yourself. But in here, there's basically everything that you would need to worry about with a mod. Creating a mod and in general, none of the code's there. It's just a basic idea as to how it works. So we'll go over this, but first off, there's an even simpler type of content. That one is a mod pack. So I'm just going to create example mod pack folder and populate it with the files. I just throw in a few of my own mods and get an idea as to how this would work. And you might also have a readme.md file. Mod packs don't generally have licenses on them. That's generally actually part of the mod. But README would just contain basically the basic description of your mod pack version and stuff like that. As a part of a mod pack, you also need modpack.txt. Then you just put all the other mods in their folders. And remember, they all have to be named. All the folders must be the quote unquote code name for the mod. But let's get on to actual, an actual mod. Back inside the mod template here, let's take a look at a couple files here. Mod.conf is an old file that was used for an old mod management system. So in general, you wouldn't need that. And screenshot.png, always a good thing to have. It was used for the old mod management system as well, but still good to have. Description.txt, also not needed as well. Guide.txt is basically what I'm going over with you right now, where you're going to put everything, stuff like that. So when you actually release the mod, you're not going to need that. So this is what it's going to look like in the end, assuming that you've got a really complex mod. This file contains information, just the general information related to the mod itself. Honestly, it's actually quite simple, even though this one's quite long. So here you might have mind test mod, we'll call it modding tutorial, and then the code name tutorial. And version, let's say 0.1, and you don't necessarily have to have status. I'm just going to say alpha license. I prefer personally the MIT license for code and CC by SA 3.0 for pictures and in general stuff that isn't code. And I'll talk about the difference between licenses in a minute here. And then you'd have a description. So tutorial is a tutorial about modding. Except you'd be a little bit nicer than that. And then over here you might say dependencies, default, included by default, whatever you want to say. And we'll talk about dependencies in a minute here. List of features, I generally put this all right into the description, stuff like that, but you might find it useful. And FAQ, to me that's all optional down here, this is useful to have. So that's a bit of the basics, save the file. But there's a lot more here. The next one would be license.txt. This is where you choose what license you'd like to put all your code and textures under. So a license is what protects you. It's kind of like copyright or patents. In fact, it is copyright. But this is what protects your code from being used by other people and even licensed so that you're not allowed to use it yourself anymore. So it's always very important to have a license. And you can use whatever license you want, but it should be compatible 
with the GPL, with GPL, I think it is version 2 or 3, since that's what my test is licensed under. I personally prefer the MIT license, which is more than compatible. All these are open source licenses, which means that anybody can modify your code, but they must include the license if they choose to redistribute it. Textures and media in general cannot be licensed under the MIT because that is a license meant for code, not media. So the CC by SA 3.0 is a, once again, an open source type license, which is the best thing to go with as far as I, as far as my research goes. Next up along the basic files, we have the depends, the depends file. Dependencies within MindTest are different mods. Your mod might use a might use a function from another mod. Let's say a mod that adds better mobs. It might be mobs.register mod. Okay? And we'll cover functions in the next video. But a dependency to be able to use that piece of that function, your mod would require that the other mod be loaded before. So what a dependency does is it makes sure that this mod specified is loaded before your mod is. That way when your mod tries to access the information, it's there. So the way we specify dependencies is simply by typing in the mod name. So let's say mobs, for example. And then save the file and the mobs mod would be loaded before yours every time you launched mine test. But more likely, you would need to get information from the default mod. That's the mod where all the sounds and basic stuff like that is. So you just type in default, and that would mean that the default mod would be loaded before yours. There are two different types of dependencies, general dependencies like what we have right here, and there's also optional dependencies. So let's say that we're making a mod that uses stuff from default and it has to have that, but there's it can also use, it has the ability to register a mob, but doesn't have to. So that would be the mobs mod. But all we need to do here is put a question mark. Then it's up to your mod to check and make sure that the mobs mod is there before trying to register items. But this will make sure that that mod loads before your mod does. That way there's no issues with stuff not being loaded. Before moving on to the init.lua file, we're going to cover a couple of the folders that are part of your project. Inside the textures folder is where you'd place all the textures, so that's what actually changes what a block looks like. That's what actually defines that. That's where all the PNG images, normally 16 by 16, would go. Sounds is obviously where you'd put generally .ogg files, can be mp4, whatever you'd like, in here that your mod would use. Schematics are stuff like, for example, a tree is a schematic, and so would like a house, stuff like that. Models is just like a custom shape for your block. Instead of just using a node box, which also will do a custom shape, which we'll learn about later, or something completely different. Now we're gonna be moving on to the part of the mod that actually makes stuff happen. The init.lua file is the file that mine test runs whenever the mod's loaded. So that's where all your code goes. And you can also have more folders and put more code in there. We'll take a quick peek at this one right now. And in here we have, I tend to not put the mods part of this, but up here we have a comment, which is specified by two dashes, saying what file we're in. We're in the mod name, so tutorial slash init.lua. And you can also put, put a little reminder like this to say, check out license.txt to find out all about that stuff. And this is a global table which we call tutorial to store information about your mod. Once again, we'll be covering that in the next video. With all that taken care of, we need to find out how to actually test our mod and put it in an environment that we can run it and get actual results directly inside MindTest. To do that, we need to start off by creating a testing world in MindTest. So what we're going to be doing is loading the mod so it will only work with a specific world instead of with all of them. So to do that, we need to open up MindTest and create a new world. I'm just going to call this Modding Tutorial. And then we're going to create a link 
we can close mind test now and then we're going to create a link between this folder here and a special folder inside the world folder. Now something to keep in mind is that when you delete the world you always should remove the link first because otherwise all the contact contents of this folder will be deleted at the same time. Making a link is a little bit different on each different operating system. On Mac and Linux it's the general same idea except to a different folder, whereas on Windows it's a completely different command and completely different folder. So on Mac and Linux you need to go into the home directory and press Control H to see hidden folders. On Windows you simply need to browse to the installation directory. That's normally games slash mind test slash I think it's worlds is where we're going to be headed. So on Linux and Mac we need to go to after pressing Control H on Linux we go to dot mind test slash worlds slash modding tutorial. Now on Mac that would normally be library slash application support slash mind test slash worlds. And once inside the modding tutorial world, we need to create a directory called world mods. So all you need to do is new folder, world mods with no spaces. And now we can just close out of our file browser. At this point we need to open the terminal, which on Linux is Control alt c or on Mac just search for terminal. On Windows, it is called the command prompt. So we're going to open it up here. And what we need to do is type ln-s for symbolic link. Projects, assuming we're in the home folder, to make sure we're going to put the little squiggly here, slash projects, compress tab to autocomplete, slash in this case tutorial, and then where we want to put the link to slash dot mind test slash worlds slash modding tutorial slash world mods and then just press enter and now if we open up the file browser again and navigate to the folder inside world mods we can see a tutorial folder with this little icon here and if we open it up there's already all of those things right here and then if we change a file inside the main projects folder, for example, compress control H to get rid of this again, for example, delete the mod.conf file, we can see it's been updated back at the world mods as well. So this just makes it really easy to work and keep everything separate. Now on Windows, the command would be much like it except it would be make link mk l n i k l i n k slash d for symbolic and then the original folder just say uh, you replace this with probably slash game slash mind test slash worlds etc and then the i mean sorry projects and then this one would be the target so that's the world folder with all that taken care of we are ready to start actually learning the basic ideas of how Lua works. But that is going to be for another video since we've already covered quite a bit in this one. So anyway, remember to like the video down below if you'd like to keep this series going. I'm probably going to keep it going anyway, but like a like really helps down there. And comments if you've got any suggestions or questions. I can try and answer those as well. In the next episode, we are going to learn how to do some basic stuff like Lua, such as use functions, if statements, and loops, all that kind of neat stuff. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next video.